Well, welcome, guys, and welcome to a new entry from the vault. So today we have Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver. Released for the PlayStation 1 in 1999, developed by Crystal Dynamics, and published by Eidos. Also, can we just take a moment to really appreciate this, uh, this start menu screen here? It's really creepy and really cool. Anyway, so this is the sequel to Blood Omen. This time around, you control a new character named Raziel. Gameplay is almost completely different from its predecessor. It's still an action-adventure game with fighting and puzzles to solve, but now it's fully in 3D. Raziel, Raziel also has the ability to phase between two different worlds, changing how he can get to certain areas and tackle certain puzzles. This game is notorious for the many block puzzles it has. Blocks. Blocks everywhere. Like its predecessor, though, the writing is top-notch, and the voice actors really do a stunning performance. Oh, we'll definitely turn that up, turn these down a little bit. Alright, so this game takes place 1500 years after the events of Blood Omen. Cade had chosen not to sacrifice himself to restore the Pillars of Nodzgoth, dooming the land to an eternal decay. Humans are now all but extinct, leaving mostly just vampires around. One of Cade's lieutenants, Raziel, has, had grown wings one day. Seeing this as an act of treason, Cain condemns him by throwing him into the Lake of the Dead. However, he ends up resurrected by the Elder God. With a second chance of life, Raziel becomes the Elder God's Soul Reaver, and now seeks to take revenge on his former master. Alright, let's start it up. Hey look, there's the Pillars of Nazgoth. Cain is deified. The clans tell tales of him. Few know the truth. He was mortal once, as were we all. However, his contempt for humanity drove him to create me and my brethren. I am Raziel, firstborn of his lieutenants. I stood with Cain and my brethren at the dawn of the Empire. I have served him a millennium. Over time, we became less human and more... divine. Cain would enter the state of change and emerge with a new gift. Some years after the Master, our evolution would follow. Until I had the honor of surpassing my lord. Nice wings. I earned a new kind of reward. Agony. Ow. There was only one possible outcome. My eternal damnation. was to suffer the fate of traitors and weaklings, to burn forever in the bowels of the Lake of the Dead. Cast him in. There we go. Tumbling, burning with white hot fire, I plunged into the depths of the abyss. Unspeakable pain, relentless agony. Time ceased to exist. Only this torture and a deepening hatred of the hypocrisy that damned me to this hell. What a way to go. An eternity passed, and my torment receded, bringing me back from the precipice of madness. The descent had destroyed me, and yet I lived.
now you look cool. Ah, uh, the legendary Sir Tony J once again. I know you, Razier. You are worthy. What madness is this? What pitiful form is this that I have come to inhabit? Death would be a release next to this travesty. You did not survive the Abyss, Razier. I have only spared you from total dissolution. I would choose oblivion over this existence. The choice is not yours. I am destroyed. You are reborn. The birth of one of Cain's abominations traps the essence of life. It is this soul that animates the corpse you lived in. And that, Raziel, is the demise of Nazgoth. There is no balance. The souls of the dead remain trapped. I cannot spin them in the wheel of fate. They cannot complete their destinies. Redeem yourself. Or if you prefer, avenge yourself. Settle your dispute with Cain. Destroy him and your brethren. Free their souls and let the wheel of fate churn again. Use your hatred to reave their souls. I can make it possible. Become my soul reaver. My angel of death. Soul reaver, huh? So it's kind of funny how Raziel's resurrection here kind of parallels Cain's. Where Cain was resurrected into a vampire and Raziel... Uh, Raziel is resurrected into a soul reaver. Now, I don't know if the character that... I think he's called the Elder God that Tony J is voicing is the same person, the, necro, the necromancer from the first game. I have a feeling it's just a, a different character altogether and it's just Tony J voicing him. Alright, so let's get going. L2 and R2 are the camera controls. L1 is to duck walk. These gates twist space, laying a path across great spans. Okay, so they're warp points, basically. Not that it does us any good right now. It's quite a dramatic change going straight from Blood Omen to this, because they're very different games. You are weak. You must feed. The old hunger has left me. I have no desire for blood. You are changed. Your bloodthirst is replaced by a deeper need. You have become a devourer of souls. To sustain your strength, you must hunt the lost spirits of the underworld and consume the souls of your enemies. Okay, so we need to feed on souls instead of blood. Okay, full health. Uh, yep. L1 and X to high jump. Okay.
Your wings, though ruined, are not without purpose. Take hold of them as you leap, and they will carry you across this chasm. Okay, so we can still glide, even though our wings have been torn up. What scabrous wretches are these? Sua, the scavengers of the underworld. Their feral hunger has claimed countless souls, spirits who now shall never find their rest. Oh boy. We're gonna have to fight them. It's just running away. These portals are your conduit between the spectral and material realms. With their aid, you may gather matter and will yourself to become manifest in the physical world. This is taxing, however. Your strength must first be fully restored. You require no conduit to return to this plane. You may abandon your physical body at any time. Okay, so we need full health if we're to use these portals. Sustain your strength to prolong your manifestation in the physical world. If you fail to feed or absorb too many wounds, this fragile matter will dissolve. This rack of matter, huh? So yeah, you switch planes between the spectral and the physical world, which does actually change the landscape. You'll need to take advantage of this to uh, traverse some areas. Where am I heading? This way? You are young yet, Raziel. You still retain many of your vampiric weaknesses. Immersion in water, while not fatal, will dissolve your physical body, forcing your return to the spirit world. Be aware that in the spectral realm, water has neither heft nor lift. It stands as thin as air. Okay, so in the spirit world, it's corporeal. Got it. So, water bad. What are these creatures? Do you not recognize them? They are the children of your brother, Duma. That's impossible. These foul scuttling beasts could not be kin of our high blood? Do you suppose that time stood still for you, Raziel? Much has changed since you passed from the world of men. Oh boy. So this is his brother Duma's children. I knew my opponent's weaknesses, having suffered them myself. Physical wounds are fleeting. A vampire's immortal flesh begins to close as soon as it is cleaved. Vampires need only fear those wounds that impale or inflame. Water scorches like acid, and fledglings are devastated by sunlight's touch. 
would have to modify my tactics to suit my foes. All right. Unfettered from the flesh, a creature's soul fades swiftly into the spectral realm. Draw it in quickly, Raziel, or you will be compelled to follow. Let's see, yeah. Gotta impale them, throw them into water, or throw them into sunlight. Otherwise, you're not getting very far. Alright, off you go! Your physical prowess surpasses what you knew in life. Even massive obstacles can be moved effortlessly. Okay. How do I look around? Block puzzles. Although this isn't really a puzzle. Okay, so if you double tap square, then Raziel will just push it. Yeah, as you can see, our HP is slowly draining, which is why we need to keep filling it up with souls. My God! The sanctuary of the clans reduced to ruin. Beyond these walls lay the pillars of Nosgoth, the seat of Cain's empire. How humble it now appeared, collapsing into the dust of its former magnificence. And yet, I had only just emerged. In the instant between my execution and resurrection, centuries had apparently passed. This world is wrecked with cataclysms. The Earth strains to shrug off the pestilence of Cain's parasitic empire. The fate of this world was preordained in an instant by a solitary man. Unwilling to martyr himself to restore Nosgoth's balance, Cain condemned the world to the decay you see. In that moment, the unraveling began. Now it is nearly played out. Nosgoth teeters on the brink of collapse. Its fragile balance cannot hold. So yeah, basically Cain had a choice at the end of Blood Omen. He could sacrifice himself and restore the pillars fully, or, you know, not. And the canon ending is that he didn't. And that's where we are now. I'll take that. So these are useful since we can keep using them. Oh, that didn't work. So dealing with NFC enemies in this is kind of similar to Blood, Blood Omen in that you have to deal enough damage to, to them to stun them, although you don't absorb their blood. Goodbye.
So here is a portal room. They're usually marked by these doors. So now we have a shortcut back to the starting area. Not that we need to go back there right now. Though I think if you are killed, like, fully, uh, you're sent back there. Right to the beginning of the game. This looks familiar. The Lake of the Dead. This, at least, had remained constant. The endlessly swirling vortex of the abyss. My tomb and the womb of my rebirth. Though much of Nosgoth's landscape had changed, these cliffs gave me my bearings. My clan territory was to the west. I was anxious to see how my descendants had fared during the centuries of my absence. All right, off we go. You can also use those torches there to light vampires on fire. Whoop. That soul went right back into its body super quick. Hello. Really got to be aggressive with these guys to keep inflicting damage. I wonder, can I get this already? Find out in a minute. Utter desolation. My once proud kin wiped from this world like excrement from a boot. I knew the hand that wrought this deed.
another portal unlocked. Actually, I might not be able to get that power up just yet. I might need to be have the ability to phase through bars first. Oh well, that's not a big deal. It's not like we're, we're beating the game or anything with this. That's water, and we know now water is bad. We're not going that way. Ah, this one's slightly bigger, so it must be tougher. Spear. Let's take it. else down here. I mainly recognize Raziel's voice actor as uh, Dr. Nefarious's butler from Ratchet and Clank. Lawrence? Is that his name? Yeah, I think his name is Lawrence. Alright, so I think we're closing in on the first puzzle of the game. Human. I didn't recognize these flayed racks of flesh. Their scent was vampiric. They gnawed upon their victim's carcass like dogs. Burned ya. That's a human. I don't want to kill a human. 
This charnel house bore the unmistakable marks of Melchiah's clan. To what depths had our dynasty plummeted if these ghouls were the descendants of my high-born brother? Were they so debased as to recruit fledglings from the desiccated corpses here interred? Hmm. I don't know, Cain. Uh, Cain? I mean, Raziel. What? <laughs> he just got killed by... <laughs> okay. He got killed by me moving the block. That's quite amusing. My brother Melchiah was made last and therefore received the poorest portion of Cain's gift. Although immortal, his soul could not sustain the flesh which retained much of its previous human frailty. This weakness, it seemed, was passed on to his offspring. Their fragile skins barely contained the underlying decay. out of its misery. Oh god. This camera, please. Okay, another portal activated. Maybe that's for later? Maybe I don't have to bother with it right now. Holy slow down. Okay, that works. in the first of the puzzle areas. This is what I wanted to get to. So I think here we need to abandon our body. Yeah. <laughs> 
It's looking like it. Beware, Raziel. These wraiths are vampire spirits, fettered too long in the spectral realm. When their vampire natures adapt to this plane, they become eaters of souls. Oh. Do not allow these spirits to re-inhabit their corpses. Oh. Here it comes. Gotcha. But yeah, see, notice how the envir these walls here started to jut out because we entered the spectral realm. It's pretty interesting. And then again, you need full HP to be able to manifest in the real world. This block here. L1 and square to flip. Okay. Puzzle solving. I think we just dropped down. I shouldn't have dropped all the way to the bottom. it up onto there. Lift this, lift it over here. Oh, yep. Ok, 
Okay, so that got that gate back opened. Well, opened again. Should have jumped up. Oh man, and I screwed up. Okay, so we needed to get up here so that we could glide to this weight and bring it down. up. Not keep falling down, Raziel. Now this time we're going to stay in the spirit realm. Go over to the weight that we raised. It will not shift weight now because we're in the spectral realm. And then shift back again. that block on top off. Just push it back. Okay, and gate opened. So that is the first major puzzle of the game completed. Alright, well, I think that this will be a pretty good showcase for the game. Oh, let's see. It wants me to push that off. Yeah, I think that this will be a pretty good showcase of the game. Uh, it is definitely different from uh, Blood Omen, but I think that it plays a lot better, honestly. Uh, at least from what I've seen, though, there are some slowdown issues and some problems with the camera. But, um, and there are, the, you know, all the block puzzles that you have to solve as Raziel. And trust me, there's a lot more of them. But overall, I feel like this is a more enjoyable game than the original Blood Open. It's pretty cool. 